Donkey Kong has always been a staple Nintendo franchise up there with the likes of Super Mario, Pokemon, and The Legend of Zelda. While well, Donkey Kong had struggled to find a genre that fit, spanning from the original arcade games, racing spin-offs, collect-a-thons, puzzle and party games, and even a math game here or there, Donkey Kong's most consistent series has to be the Donkey Kong Country franchise. Donkey Kong Country was brought to life by Rareware in the middle to late 90s on the SNES and was a successful reboot, spawning two sequels and establishing Rareware as a reliable partner for Nintendo. Jump forward nearly 15 years later and Donkey Kong Country itself would see a reboot on the Wii courtesy of Metroid Prime developer Retro Studios, Donkey Kong Country Returns. A fantastic return to form and a success with both critics and fans, Donkey Kong Country Returns' performance would pave the way for a sequel on Nintendo's first HD console. The Wii U's library was home to some great first-party titles during its short lifespan, and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is at the top of that list. The Texas-based developer used Returns as a jumping-off point, honing their craft on what worked while injecting its sequel with as much creativity and textbook design application imaginable, creating one of the most technically proficient and expertly designed 2D platformers to date. Visually, Tropical Freeze is fantastic, blending a cartoony art direction with realistic fur and lighting effects that make for one truly beautiful game. In fact, everything about the art direction and style is on point in Tropical Freeze, from the distinct and varied level aesthetics to the colorful and expressive enemy designs. The amount of variety Retro was able to squeeze out of the locales in Tropical Freeze is a feat in and of itself. With the name like Tropical Freeze, one would assume ice would be a main component of every level, and while it does come up later in the game, every island the player visits is unique and interesting. Starting off with a traditional tropical setting, Tropical Freeze gets more creative as the game progresses. Levels based on windmill-filled European-inspired villages, indigenous giant fruit factories, and an African savanna-themed island are some of the standout areas. Retro was able to stray away from the cliché 2D platformer level tropes of grass, water, fire, sand, etc., and create a truly unique setting that outranks anything in the Kong's past. While each of Tropical Freeze's six base worlds and its seventh secret world have unique overall themes, each level somehow is able to stand out within each specific aesthetic. This means every level is visually unique and no level ever blends together, making DK's latest adventure one of his most memorable ones. Take World 3, Bright Savannah, for example, one of my favorite islands. Level 1, Grassland Groove, has the player jumping through a proverbial African-themed parade with the environment bouncing along to some of the best music in the game, bar none. Transition to level 4, Scorch and Torch, this is the previous Savannah now set a blaze. This is one of the many examples that Tropical Freeze is packed to the brim with. Retro did an amazing job injecting as much creativity as possible in each level, making most of them, if not all of them, instant classics. One of the best aspects of the levels, to me, is how cohesive and immersive these levels are built probably asking yourself how can a game with a giant ape and a monkey with the flying hair abilities jumping around fantastically designed worlds fighting anthropomorphic ice themed animals like penguins and walruses be immersive well it's retro's attention to detail in a game like let's say super mario platforms tend to just exist as platforms hanging in midair for players to jump on and use to traverse each stage in tropical freeze every platform in the game is built cohesively into each level to fit its theme from the typical things like rocks and wooden platforms to the creative like giant hunks of fruit, windmill perches, and giant gears, everything exists in this world Retro has created. Tropical Freeze on a technical level would still work without the cleverly implemented world design, but that added extra bit of creativity goes a long way in making Tropical Freeze so special. Tropical Freeze's levels are visually striking and varied, but impressive graphics don't make an impressive game, and Retro Studios is just as talented technically as they are artistically. We'll get to the gameplay soon enough, but the driving force behind my love for Tropical Freeze is its level design. Just like how each level differs visually, they also differ mechanically, offering level-specific gimmicks to flesh out the already great core gameplay of running and jumping. While this is par for the course for 2D platformers, even to this day, Tropical Freeze goes the extra mile and pushes the envelope in terms of creating compelling and challenging levels. A lot of 2D platformers tend to attempt what Tropical Freeze pulls off with such ease, adding a plethora of gimmicks that hinder the experience rather than elevate it. Tropical Freeze avoids that hurdle by creating different gameplay scenarios that build on the core mechanics the player has by default. Take World 2-6 Wingding, for example. Up to this point in the game, Tropical Freeze had established that players can grab things with the push of Y, like barrels or downed enemies to use as weapons, or access to secondary characters like Diddy Kong, pulling up plugs in the ground for secrets, and most importantly,
frequently grabbing ropes or vines to climb up or swing across gaps. In Wingding, Tropical Freeze adds onto the established mechanic of grabbing objects in the environment by introducing sloped vines, allowing players to traverse over bottomless pits automatically. Like any great developer, Retro implements its level-specific mechanics perfectly, first introducing the mechanics or set of mechanics that the stage will utilize in a safe space like these bells. Previously, players had to roll to bash open a door, blocking their way at the beginning of the stage, and since their way is blocked again, it only makes sense to roll under these bells here using ZR. Once outside, players will notice two elements, the golden plug on the ground and the zip line hanging in midair. Previously, players had learned about the plug mechanic and how to grab it using Y, and since since one would have naturally assume Donkey Kong has to grab the vine, players will instinctively jump and grab at the zip line. Once on the zip line, players will notice the bells from earlier and using what they've learned, they can ring them by hitting ZR. Player times the button pressed perfectly and progress through the stage. That small aside of explaining one of the level's many mechanics in play is exactly how the entire game is set up, establishing new gimmicks, iterating on them, then combining them with previous mechanics to string together challenging and rewarding gameplay moments. The consistency at which Tropical Freeze is able to keep up the quality of the level design is astounding, making for one of the best designed 2D platformers out there. While 2D platformers usually go for the quantity over quality philosophy, bombarding the player with level after level without much variety, Tropical Freeze takes the opposite approach, and while it has less worlds and levels than Returns did on the Wii, what's offered here is the cream of the crop. No level feels like padding, an extra level here or there to expand the gameplay length. Every level has a purpose, and is so expertly designed down to the timing of enemy animations, to the multitude of unique gimmicks that flesh out Tropical Freeze beyond its predecessors and into the upper echelon of 2D platforming. So the game's got good levels, so what? If you can't jump around effectively in these fantastic levels, it's all a moot point, right? Well, as great as Retro Studios is at designing levels, they're equally great as their main gameplay. Donkey Kong may look like a typical platformer from the onset, with jumping and bopping enemies on the head to progress through the game, but the myriad of small abilities he and his buddies possess make him much more intricate. First off, DK controls near perfectly. He has just enough weight to feel every impact of the player's actions without being too heavy where pulling off tricky jumps is impossible. Donkey Kong and company can perform the previously mentioned grab, which I laid out has a ton of different applications. A ground smash of sorts is also a DK's repertoire used to stun enemies, smash obstacles, and open secret passageways. Secret passageways are usually accessed by barrels, a staple of the Donkey Kong Country franchise, launching players in all directions. For the first time since the SNES era, DK and company can swim, but now in full 360 degrees, adding more variety to the gameplay. The greatest tool in the Kong's arsenal has to be the roll move. This allows players to speed up in a short burst and can blast through enemies with ease or give you an extra boost to reach a far off platform. Using the roll in conjunction with the different Kong abilities allows for some great trick moves to be pulled off, which is pretty empowering if I do say so myself. Speaking of the Kongs, two classic characters make their return in the form of Dixie and Cranky Kong, with Diddy Kong coming back from returns. Diddy has his jetpack, allowing players to slow their descent extending jumps in the process. Dixie can use her hair to flutter jump almost, allowing for more vertical movement and course correction mid-air. Cranky is similar to Scrooge McDuck from the classic DuckTales, using his cane like Scrooge to pogo his way across dangerous obstacles and gain extra height when bouncing off of enemies. While Diddy and Dixie act in similar ways, they're both great in their own right, allowing players to reach a platform with ease or save themselves from certain doom. Cranky seems to be the odd one out for most people, but I actually really like his playstyle. It's different, and while his special abilities are much more situational, it's a blast rolling through a level and perfectly timing his cane bounce off of multiple enemies to keep the speed going, or using it to save myself from taking a hit off a mistimed jump over some spikes or vines. While the main draw is its classic 2D platforming action, Donkey Kong Country has always been known for its collectathon nature, and Tropical Freeze is no exception. Collectibles are always a huge plus for me, and Tropical Freeze is packed full with them. The classic four Kong letters return, as well as the puzzle pieces from the original Donkey Kong Country trilogy and returns, respectively. On top of bananas, of course, banana coins to use in Funky Shop, as well as red balloons serving as lives. Retro didn't just toss a bunch of these collectibles out there mindlessly to grab, though. The vast array of ways players can find these collectibles is pretty impressive. There's the tried and true bonus rooms, which are a timed race to collect all the bananas in the room as possible. Kong letters are strewn about in areas that demand the player use their abilities effectively. Hordes of bananas that spawn from a smashed crate or pulled plug that once collected will grant the player a puzzle piece or a banana coin. Some are even hidden in plain sight, forcing players to be patient or time a jump or barrel blast perfectly to nab them. All of these elements culminate in an absolute joy to behold on the gameplay front. Tight, responsive controls and expertly crafted levels are key to drop 
Tropical Freeze's success, and Metro pulled it off with flying colors. But one aspect that kept me coming back to Tropical Freeze wasn't just its fantastic level design combined with great gameplay, but it was also its difficulty. I'm usually not one to seek out difficult games, primarily because I want to relax and unwind after a long day at work, or enjoy a great story or some fun gameplay. Dying a million times and tearing my hair out really isn't a selling point for me, but Tropical Freeze was able to create a satisfying difficulty that's more challenging than it is unfair. Every death is my fault, and not the fault of some badly designed level aspect or enemy placement. I mistimed that jump. I rushed and rolled too soon. I hesitated and took a hit. I didn't utilize my abilities correctly and died. It's frustrating to the point of wanting to beat it, not to throwing the controller and turning the Wii U off. I'm thankful Retro was able to strike such a great balance. While Tropical Freeze fires on all cylinders in terms of gameplay, visuals, and design, its music somehow is able to top all of that and then some. David Wise, composer of the original Donkey Kong Country trilogy on the SNES, returns for Tropical Freeze, and it's a treat to the ears. From the ambient, to the bombastic, to the calming, to the epic, Wise was able to compose a soundtrack as varied as the levels themselves. Some standout tracks have to be Windmill Hills theme, mentioned Grassland Groove theme. Outstanding Sticker Brush Symphony Remix, Twilight Terror. My favorites are the clearly Bon Jovi inspired World 5's boss theme, Punch Bowl. Mr. Wise, my hat is off to you, kind sir. An absolute masterpiece of a soundtrack. Speaking of bosses, Tropical Freeze is a killer lineup of baddies to beat up. Where the tiki enemies from Returns were an alright stand-in for the classic Kremlins, the Snowmads are a great original threat. Each boss encounter is good at testing the player's abilities on top of being creative not only in visual design but attack pattern as well. They're an improvement on Returns bosses, showing Retro is proficient in improving on what worked and fixing what didn't. Bafflingly initial review scores and launching exclusively on an underperforming console, Tropical Freeze unfortunately never really got the attention it deserved. Luckily though, Tropical Freeze did get a Switch re-release, with a bigger install base is doing much better than its Wii U counterpart, which is promising. While it's basically the same game, it did add Funky Kong as a playable character who acts sort of as an easy mode for the game, combining all the Kong abilities into one character essentially. I'd highly recommend picking up the Switch version. While I do love my Wii U, let's face it, a lot more people have a Switch nowadays. Simply put, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is a blast. Retro Studios put all of their passion, design, and art skills into Tropical Freeze and it shows. It's one of the best 2D platformers of all time in my opinion, up there with the greats like Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, and even Donkey Kong Country 2. Any platforming fan who hasn't experienced Tropical Freeze should definitely at some point. It's a masterclass in game design and should be recognized as such, and I eagerly await Retro Studios' next project, Donkey Kong or not. They've shown they're at the top of their class in this industry and are worthy with partnering with such a giant in the industry like Nintendo.